Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Blue Ridge Silverhound. I'm your boy, Sean, uh, your host for today. And I wanted to, to uh, take some time to uh, talk about a subject I haven't talked about in quite some time uh, regarding the Monday Market Report. Okay, so you guys have watched a number of those episodes. We've been going strong with the MMRs for approximately two plus years now. So thank you for making that kind of like an integral part to my channel okay you guys seem to enjoy that okay and then as of recently as i believe six to eight months ago we implemented a pocket change market report generally those would be dropping on a friday which today is however we are um on fourth of july weekend today's july 3rd by the way so we are like way deep into the summer months and um I'm going to switch it up on you just this once, so this is going to be kind of like a one-shot, one-time affair. Um, the coins I'm going to be talking about in this video are going to be the uh, uh, the uh, notable error coins that have sold on great collections over the past month. Okay, I really don't talk about error coins on the Monday Market Report, um, only because of all the other content of other significant modern coins that I just don't have time to fit in the notable error coins okay and um, I'm gonna be going on vacation for a day or two for the 4th of July weekend so I'll be unable to upload a pocket change market report for you guys I do apologize about that but um, here is your replacement for the weekend okay so this will be the one video I put up and then the next one will be Sunday night uh, so we're going to talk about and uh, just kind of go over all of the notable coins that have sold. Okay, what's it going to take to find some of these out there in the wild? Um, some of them not quite so easy, and then there are some of them that um, generally a lot of people have passed up only because um, the error isn't uh, you know isn't known right away. Okay, and um, a lot of people that just spend their money or put in into a piggy bank jar or something like that. Um, they usually don't think about the errors and different key dates that come out of these. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that uh, here on this report. Uh, as you can see, we're on greatcollections.com, one of the best sites uh, for secondary selling. Uh, I would say if you have better quality coins, Great Collections is a much better option than eBay. Um, and they sell every week. Okay, you don't have to wait for a significant sale from some of the other auction providers, which could take months. All right, uh, so th this is definitely one of my go-to spots, not only for buying but selling. They've been fantastic. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and take a look at some of the error coins. Um, and like always, we're gonna focus, try and focus on uh, some of the more modern post nineteen hundred coins. Um, you know, stuff that's uh, that you should be made aware of, all right? But, of course, you know, we're not going to talk about things like this. This Gold American Eagle Burnished Minor Reverse Strike Through. I mean, it sounds neat and all, but uh, how often do we come across a Gold Eagle, right? So, anyways, I figure we go ahead and start out with this uh, pretty neat-looking Washington Quarter. Uh, so, as you can see, Mint Error, no date. Washington Quarter struck on Philippines 5 centavos. Planchet weight is 2.5 grams. So that's uh, about the, the, the weight of a copper-coated zinc Lincoln scent. Um, and it is also PCGS graded Mint State 63 Brown. As you can see, it sold for $1,125. So let's go ahead and see exactly what this is about. All right, 63 Brown. And uh, this is what the coin looks like. Up close, uh, let me go ahead and move my uh, my mug up here. There we go. All right, so there we go. That's what that one looks like. Um, obviously, the coin is a lot smaller uh, than what a traditional Washington Quarter would look like. This would probably stump a few folks. Uh, it used to be that people used to grind down bigger coins to achieve a different denomination. Uh, I think the most common type is... Um, turning a penny into a dime so that way you could use it in a vending machine okay uh, we actually talked about that on our live q a stream last night which was fantastic by the way go ahead and check it out 
Uh, but this one right here, make no mistake about it. I mean, it's on a different composition, a different metal. Um, it's probably circa 1940s, maybe early 1950s, when the U.S. Mint was still producing coins for other countries. Okay, Philippines, uh, definitely one of the more big ones out there that was being produced by the U.S. Mints. Um, so you can see why, you know, these ha I mean, if you look at the coin, obviously the five centavos Philippines coin was never struck. It was just the, uh, the planchet that was used to produce this Washington quarter. So that's what the front of the coin looks like. Here's the reverse. All right. It's kind of got that kind of like, um, that coppery goldish color on there. So you can tell right away it's different. Um, the likelihood that you'll find one of these, probably not too high. Um, unless maybe you were at a coin dealer and you came across one in just some random, you know, error lot or something like that. Um, uh, the chance of actually finding one of these raw um, is pretty low, okay? And th this is what I would consider to be kind of like a lottery odds type find out there today. All right, so we got that one. Uh, we have just, uh, you know, quite a few of the uh, the more generic stuff that we generally come across uh, being sold week after week. Um, the doubled edge lettering, presidential dollar coins, most notably the John Adams. That's the one date that it's, you know, that that's identifiable with that particular error um, or variety, however you want to classify it. Uh, also the missing edge lettering. Uh, we see plenty of those. There are a few key dates, uh, a few key presidents that are worth quite a bit of money. Um, you know, uh, Abraham Lincoln comes to mind. Uh, that's a coin without the edge lettering. That sells for probably about $800 to $1,000. And let's see. And then you have some of the more minor stuff. Like here's a 99 Jefferson Nickel struck 10% off center. Um, but, you know, these are the prices reflected on that. Uh, so generally, I, I just skip over that. Uh, so this one looks pretty neat. It's a 1999, 1993, rather, D, Denver, Washington Quarter. It's double struck with the second strike 10% off center. Okay, it's a PCGS Mid-State 64, sold for $461.25. Um, talk about wow factor. All right, can't believe this thing only sold for 460 bucks. Uh, but you can see the double strike. And when it's just offset by about 10, 15%, you get an extraordinarily just visually captivating coin. Okay. And that's what this one is right here. Um, keep in mind your, your ability to find one of these is actually greatly enhanced. Um, maybe not so much the offset double struck coins, but more so the ones that are, um, double struck, rotated in collar. Okay, those always seem to kind of like fall through the cracks for a lot of people. Um, even some of the most astute and well knowledge uh, coin collectors miss out on double struck coins um, only because that, you know, some of them don't even show the actual characteristics. And that's why I bring up the rotated in collar variety types. They're just... Uh, Difficult to identify at first glance. Okay, you would literally have to look at every single coin um, You know a few times you gotta do the double take but this one right here. No doubt about it um, it, it is attainable in change um, Albeit it's a very rare variety to come across compared to some of the more other more common errors, you know like laminations and die breaks and die chips, cuts, that thing, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, 460 bucks just seems like an incredible bargain for this type of coin. So I was more than a little, uh, kind of like, a, I don't know, bewildered that it didn't hit, you know, maybe like six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800. So, beautiful coin. Okay, and then we have a few others. Like, here's a 60D Lincoln uh, with little die date die chips in the B and 6 of date. Okay, that's relatively common, but here's one that sold for $84. Uh, the grade is nice and high. It's a mid-state 66 red. A few other minor errors. Uh, here's a 78 Jefferson nickel struck on defective one-cent plank. All right, so uh, again, same thing. When these coins are all being struck at the mints, 
uh, you got to keep in mind that um, the U.S. mints are not immune to, you know, keeping everything all together in, in their respective batches. And I'm referring to the actual planchets. Um, so this one right here, obviously a um, pre-1982 copper era Lincoln scent blank fell into a batch of nickel blanks. All right, and that's, that's how you have this one here. Um, these have been discovered in change before. Uh, we actually had a gentleman that found one um, on one of the Facebook groups and um, I think is sent out to grading as we speak. Um, but this one, this is just an incredible coin if you come across it. Obviously, it's going to be smaller in size. It's going to exhibit kind of this reddish, coppery color to it. You know, all the things that, that kind of identify it as being a mint error. All right, so we got that one there. Uh, let's see. So here's a uh, another a presidential dollar. This is the Grover Cleveland. I happen to know that this is one of the more tougher dates to find with the missing edge lettering. Okay, so as you can see, it's reflective in the finalized hammer price. That's $703.12. Um Missing edge lettering, it's a PCGS Mint State 64. Okay, so that's one of the tougher ones. Here's another one, Millard Fillmore. Not nearly as rare, uh, but as you can tell, it sold for 220 bucks. And I think it has more to do with actual grade. Mint State 68 is uh, is quite a, a, a huge um, just grade level for these type of coins that you don't see that often. All right, so we got more presidential dollars. We're going to go ahead and kind of skip through those um, here's a 57 Franklin half dollar reverse struck through uh, probably a little spot of grease or something it is a proof NGC proof 68 it's NGC graded sold for just under 80 bucks so we got that one there uh, this one's pretty cool 1918 D mercury dime with a 15% straight clip all right, so uh, that one sold for about 600 bucks. a graded NGC Mint State 62. Full bands, so that's an interesting there. Uh, yeah, you can find clips and stuff on those older coins, uh, but that one's in much nicer shape. All right, some of the more minor stuff. All right, so here's a pretty big one right here. This is a 1979S Susan B. Anthony dollar, double denomination, on a struck scent PCGS Mint State 64 Red Brown. I would assume that the scent that it was struck on is also a 79. Gotta get a little morning coffee this morning. Uh, so yeah, it, it came close to selling for six grand. So this is one of the more expensive ones I've seen in quite a while. Uh, but there you go, that's what that one looks like. Um, you can just barely make out the faint, um, almost apparition of the Lincoln Memorial. So this thing was flipped over, uh, when it was struck and, um, that's pretty neat. Okay. It's just, it's so weird and strange to come across coins like this that were intended to look one way, but if it's struck on a different planchet or an already struck coin of a different denomination do you get some pretty wild results this is one of them there you go so this would be the side that you would see abraham lincoln's profile but you really don't see it on here um you just see it on the front of the coin uh where you actually see the lincoln memorial uh ghosting effect there um but this is a wow factor coin right here. Six grand. There's a lot of money for a coin uh, of this type, but it's probably worth every penny because it's been auctioned up or bid up to that amount. Now, um, again, the likelihood that you'll find one of these in change is probably not very high for all the obvious reasons, but you should, should certainly keep an eye on it for those of you that cherry pick collections and that sort of thing because people these do get discovered somewhere down the line and oftentimes they're going to be discovered as an oddity and then they'll be um, they'll be saved for a number of years they'll be thrown into a jewelry box 
or they'll be thrown into another container with a bunch of other interesting looking coins. Okay, I can see something like this kind of falling into one of those bulk kind of uh, save up lots. Uh, but that's that's a phenomenal looking coin. Six thousand dollars. Uh, here's a 79S Susan B. Anthony uh, dollar that's missing the clad layer. Sold for $559.12. It's a Mid-State 64. This thing's cool. Look at this. Now, this is something that you would be more inclined to find out there. Um, I don't know if you'll find out on a Susan B. Anthony. They only made them for a few years. Uh, but check out some of the other denominations, like Washington Quarters. Uh, half dollars. Anything, you know, anything copper nickel clad. Um, you wouldn't be able to find something like this on, you know, like a later dated manganese dollar coin, like a Sacagawea or Native American, or even a presidential dollar. Uh, but this one right here is really cool. So it's missing the entire nickel layer on just about the whole coin. You can see little bits of, uh, of it, you know, right here on the front of the coin uh, and a little strike throughs or whatever, but man, this is an incredible coin. Definitely keep, definitely keep an eye out for it for all you dollar searchers out there, which by the way is few and far between. All right, so we got a 22D piece dollar that's rotated 30 degrees, okay, um, $518. So here's the front of the coin. As you, can, as you can see, it's perfectly right side up. And then the back side of it is rotated quite a bit. 30 degrees is what they said. But yeah, it's just enough of a uh, difference that you can see it. Pretty cool. $518. And those probably is something that you could find. Not many people actually check for rotated dies. On the uh, on like bulk silver lots, so that that is a good one. Fifty-seven, uh, or that's eighteen hundreds. We'll just skip that one. So here's a pretty neat Lincoln cent, no date. Uh, obviously, this one's a twentieth century error. Uh, but check this one out. This is a fold over double strike. Uh, so the coin was struck and got elongated, folded over again, and then restruck. Uh, no visible date, but that's what that one looks like there. A lot of things were happening in the, that pre that coin press to to make this happen, and it's quick too. There you go. You can actually see the uh, the edge right here, uh, which is pretty neat. Now, if it were me, this is pro this is not this is not along kind of like my forte and. Um, uh, yeah, this is something probably you'll never come across and change. Um, people will either think it's destroyed, and they'll just toss it out. Or, um, you know, this is something that possibly has come out of a mint bag. Okay, so, so these weird kind of like, you know, cap dies and um, foldovers like this generally would come out of uh, mint sewn bags. So, and that's why people kind of jump at the chance to uh, to obtain mint sewn bags direct from the mint uh, before they hit the uh, the armored car companies for uh, repackaging because they put them in rolls. All right, 1980p Jefferson Nickel. This one's also struck on a one cent planchet. That one sold for $205. And it's a nice kind of basic grade. Uh, these can be had for a couple couple hundred bucks if you wanted one. Pretty neat oddity. All right, and then up next here, what do we got? All right, so the 76D Kennedy uh, exhibits a cut die break on the reverse at 2 o'clock, struck through reverse also at 10 o'clock. PCGS Mint State 62. This one sold for 86.62. All right, so there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, there's a lot of great keywords on the slab label. Uh, there's nothing going on on the front of the coin. It looks like a regular bicentennial. So on the reverse is where all the great stuff is. Um, so, so here's the strike through on this area, which is the 10 o'clock position, or K10. 
if we're using coin speak, uh, you can see there was probably a lot of grease or something with some debris in it that had uh, that was all the dye before this thing was struck. So it left a lot of the uh, details weak or completely missing. And then here's that die break right here, right above America. Really cool. So it's uh, almost a rim cut, but it's, you know it impedes into the actual fields and design of the coin. Um, so it's just a full blown cut. Pretty neat. 86 bucks. That just seems like a deal to me for something like that. It's already graded. There's nothing you would have to do. It, should, it would just be a really neat um, kind of conversation piece. All right, so we're getting into more dollars here. Great Collection sells a lot of these missing edge lettering dollars. Uh, there you go. Sacagawea with the missing edge lettering. 114 bucks. Here's another nickel that was struck on a one cent planchet. And a 1980 Philadelphia Jefferson nickel. That one's also struck. It's not It's not rare. These come up quite often. And uh, on the low end, they're around a couple hundred bucks. They used to be a coin that um, you couldn't buy for anything under like $400. You know, it, as recently as probably eight, nine years ago. Of course, you know, we're talking at the height of the coin market then. After uh, after the Great Recession. So, pretty neat stuff. I'm glad to see that it's come down to a more respectable level in terms of uh, affordability. Alright, 64 Kennedy struck on a tapered planchet. Alright, so the actual blank planchet was a little bit thinner on one side of it and then a regular, regular uh, thickness on the other. So... It's almost like a wedge, but the way you're going to know that you have a tapered planchet is uh, there's going to be some weakness in the actual strike. You don't see it on the obverse too much. Um, here's a reverse. Yeah, you do see a little bit of weakness here in America, uh, but that's pretty much it. I mean, there again, if you had the coin stacked up with other half dollars, you'd probably notice the difference. Because um, it would be thinner on one side of the coin than the other. Alright, so we got more dollars with missing edge lettering. John Tyler's a tough one right there. That's one of the keys. Sorry, medium keys. When they only sell for 160 bucks, uh, they're not uh, they're not fantastic. So it looks like we're going right into May here. So um, there's not a whole lot else. There's a couple significant coins that we looked at. Uh, here's a 2004 Philadelphia Florida State Quarter. That was struck on a five cent planchet. All right, much like the uh, the nickels struck on Lincoln cent planchets, this one obviously would appear a little bit smaller. So you can see some of the edge word devices have been cut off at this point. Uh, although you do have a little bit of a rim right here on this side, while a lot of the other devices have been cut off. Uh, it's pretty neat. Visually, it, it's something that can be overlooked. Um, these have been discovered through basic searching methods like coin roll hunting and just change searching. Uh, but that's a pretty neat looking error right there. Sold for seven hundred and four dollars. All right, do we have anything else? No, I think that's it. But guys, as always, feel free to go on Great Collection site. Go ahead and take a look at the uh, uh, the auction archives. Actually, let me go ahead and show you where it's at. And move my photo out here. All right, so this auction archive is right here on the top right. You'll hit classic. Uh, and then just pick whatever denomination that you want to look at, uh, error and pattern coins. And just because I show you this doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing the actual pocket change or the Monday market reports. I'm still doing them. Everybody loves them. All right, but there you go. And then just go ahead and click on error coins. If you want to look at pattern coins, you know, you, you can certainly do that. There you go. And that'll do, sir, ladies and gentlemen. That was a lot of fun um, to kind of like uh, 
blow through the last 30 to 45 days of error points on great collections. Uh, as you can see, a lot of great stuff. Um, wishing you guys a safe, help, a safe, happy, and healthy 4th of July weekend, whatever you guys decide to do, uh, make sure you do it safely. Uh, fireworks, everybody's going to be doing it on their own this, this year. I know where I'm at here in Northern California and pretty much the whole state, they're, they're uh, um, canceling a lot of the big firework shows, all right, if not all of them. Um, so anyways, that is going to do, sir. I'm your host, Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. As always, Coinologics, we are discovering together. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend, great 4th of July, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, take care.